Well, so last time we discussed the supply and demand model uh, in which we uh, discussed that uh, any determinant that cause a shift of the demand curve uh, change the uh, price and the quantity uh, demanded. Uh, same is the case with the supply as well. Uh, so today our topic is elasticity. Elasticity uh, is the measurement of how much that changes. Or uh, in other words, elasticity is a measurement of the responsiveness of the consumer towards the change in the market conditions. Uh, the shape of the demand curves are telling us that, or the supply curve telling us that, uh, the how sensitive that product or service is towards the change in the market condition. Uh, so that's our uh, overall uh, uh, topic of the uh, chapter uh, is elasticity. Uh, but we break it down uh, in discuss in the discussion uh, this elasticity into price elasticity of demand. Uh, when we are talking about the price elasticity of demand, uh, we focus on that if the price of the product change, how much the quantity demanded change because of the change in the price. Uh, then we will talk about uh, price elasticity of supply. If the price change, how much the supplies or the supplier's response to that change. Uh, so it means that we quantify uh, here in this chapter or uh, calculate the magnitude of that change. Last uh, lecture in which we discussed just the supply and demand model, uh, we just focus on the direction of the change. Uh, but here we are uh, trying to calculate the magnitude. So for that reason, uh, we need uh, some formulas to calculate the el uh, elasticities. Uh, so we focus on price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of supply, and there are certain other elasticities as well because the responsiveness of the consumer is based on other elements, what we discussed uh, in uh, in the previous chapter is as well. And one of the uh, that determinant is income. Uh, so if the income change, that how much the consumer's response to that change towards the uh, product, it can be uh, positive, it can be negative as well. But if the income change, uh, increase in income, cause a decrease in the quantity demanded for that particular product or decrease in the demand for that particular product uh, is uh, defined as an inferior good. Uh, so we will talk this one as well. And the last thing what we were going to talk is cross price elasticity. Cross price elasticity, uh, as we discussed last time, when we discussed the determinants of the demand, uh, one of the uh, determinant is the price of related goods. Related good means the complement goods or the substitute goods. So we also want to calculate it, uh, the cross price elasticity. If the price of one product change, how much that has an impact on the uh, uh, quantity or the demand for other product, not the same, but the other product, which can be a substitute or which can be a complement. So let's start uh, with uh, one by one. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna share with you the slide and then, So you can see here that, uh, <clears throat> Uh, elasticity is the uh, topic, uh, overall elasticity, and I just explained you that what is meant by elasticity. Uh, so here we can see So here we see uh, the my, <coughs> sorry. demand, uh, price elasticity of demand. So that's the first uh, topic we're going to cover. Uh, demand is elastic when we say that demand is elastic. So we use two words. One is elastic, when uh, when the responsiveness or the reaction of the consumer is uh, bigger uh, towards the price, uh, we call it as elastic. And uh, the other one, uh, that is the uh, uh, opposite to that, what we call it as inelastic. So demand is elastic when quantity demanded is quite responsive to change in price. So when quantity demand is relatively unresponsive to change in price, the demand is inelastic. So we have to uh, understand these two terms very clearly. What is elastic? What is inelastic? So elastic means when the consumer or the uh, the, the the one who is demand uh, demanding that product is more responsive toward the price uh, is elastic. And when it is less or not at all, then we call it as an inelastic. 
So the more elastic is demand, the less the change in equilibrium price and greater the change in equilibrium quantity. So the more elastic is the demand, the less change in equilibrium price, uh, a, a slight change in the price uh, cause a big change in the quantity demanded if the product is elastic in nature. And if it is inelastic, uh, then opposite to that, like uh, a change in price is not gonna cause a big change in the uh, quantity demanded. So here we can see that there are two graphs. So first we focus on the uh, left side. So we see here that there's a demand curve. And if you recall that the demand curve here is a flat one, or you can compare these two uh, figures, you can see that the demand curves are uh, different. One D uh, E, which is uh, reflecting a flatter curve. And the other one is D I, which is a very steep. So the flatness is reflecting that the demand is uh, elastic and we can prove it here as well. Like he, here we see that if the supply curve shifts because of any reason, maybe uh, because of uh, bad weather or because of increasing in input prices, so that, that can be possible. So if the supply shift to the left, that cause a change in the equilibrium and equilibrium is shifting from E0 to E1. This shift in equilibrium creates a new equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. We see here the equilibrium price is P1. Uh, that's an increase from P0 to P1. So P0 to P1, we can see here that the price is changing. And this change caused a big change in quantity demanded decrease. So we see here Q0 to Q1. So that is a big change. So it means that the demand is elastic. On the other side, when the demand curve is steeper and the same shift, you see that th these two graphs are very similar uh, from the supply uh, curve's point of view. So if the supply curve shift, now there's a new equilibrium. With this new equilibrium, we see that the price change is bigger as compared to change in quantity demanded. So we can see that this demand curve is of a product which is inelastic in nature. And the other one is elastic in nature. So, uh, so the two things what we learn from this, that uh, if the price change cause a big change in quantity demanded, we call it as elastic demand, price elastic demand. And if the price change cause a small change in quantity demanded, that, call, that we call it as a inelastic demand. And what, the other thing what we learn is from here is the shape of the demand curve. So we see here that the shape is a flatter, flatter shape, shape of any product's demand curve uh, reflects that the demand is elastic. And steeper, this one, which the other one is steeper, that reflects that the demand is inelastic in nature. So uh, when we uh, want to calculate something, we need uh, some formula or some understanding that how do we can calculate it. So the, the easiest way to calculate the price elasticity of demand, uh, which you can uh, find out in the definition as well, is a percentage change in quantity demanded, quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. And that's the formula for price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of demand. So price elasticity of demand is a change, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. Now, how do we calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded? So we see here that the change in quantity demanded means Q1 minus Q2 or Q0 minus Q1 uh, divided by this QD is an average, average of the two. Uh, you see here the bar, when, the, when there's a bar on any symbol, it means that it's an average or a mean value. So uh, if Q0 is, have a certain value and Q1 has a certain value, so we take average of these. And we also use the word midpoint between these two. So that's a denominator for calculating percentage change. Uh, so percentage change quantity is calculated like this. And similarly, the percentage price is also calculated like uh, P, uh, P1 minus P0 divided by average of the P1 and P2. And again, you see here the P is reflected with the P bar. So demand curve has a negative slope, we all know from our uh, previous uh, discussion. So the percentage change in price and quantity have a opposite signs. So we see that whenever you calculate a, a percentage change, uh, you get an, a negative sign because it's a downward sloping demand curve. Uh, but when we, we represent 
the elasticity, we use absolute value. Uh, in mathematics, when we say absolute value means we ignore the signs. Whatever the sign it is, we ignore, we just uh, tell the value, whether it is 1.2, uh, although in calculation you may get it minus 1.2, but we say it is 1.2. So elasticity is 1.2. Why it is important to understand? Because when we present, like uh, if the value you are getting is more than one, uh, you uh, call it as elastic demand. Uh, but if the minus sign is there, so it is not bigger than one. So uh, we take only absolute value. So here is a uh, example with uh, numbers so that it's going to be easy to understand. Uh, for example, we are calculating uh, the uh, price elasticity of demand for cheese. So uh, initially the price uh, was $5 uh, and the new price, now the price is $3. So it's a, it, it means that it's a decrease in price from uh, $5 to $3. And due to that, what is happening that initially when the price was five, the quantity demanded is 116,250. Um, kilograms or pounds, whatever. When the price decrease uh, from five to three, what is happening? That the quantity, the new quantity is going to be, the quantity is increased uh, from 160 to 150 to uh, 3,750. So we also calculate in this table, the average, the average price and average quantity. Average price means uh, five plus three divided by two is four. 5 plus 3 is 8, divided by 2 is 4, and 116, 250 plus 120, uh, 750 divided by 2 is 120,000. So how do we calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded? So what is a new quantity? 123, 750 minus 116, 250 divided by 120. And this is our percentage change in quantity divided by change in percentage change in price, which is five minus three over four. And by this way, we are getting the value 0 0.125. The value is less than one. So we can say that the, the demand is inelastic in nature. So if we look at the uh, a linear demand curve, a linear demand curve, a linear demand curve is like this. We can see here, it's a linear demand curve. So linear demand curve has a uh, characteristics that the slope of that linear demand curve is constant all over the, all along the curve, all along the curve, the slope is constant. And this is mathematically, we can prove it as well. Like what is a slope uh, we discuss in our, uh, one of the uh, lecture series. So what is slope and slope here is um, a rise over run or a change in Y value divided by change in X value. So we can calculate at any point, the slope is constant. But surprisingly, the, uh, the elasticity is not constant. And the reason behind them is the mathematical. You can see that the formula for calculating uh, uh, elasticity is different than slope. So, so we can say that uh, elasticity is different than uh, slope. Uh, so we can see that elasticity of a linear demand curve uh, varies when we move along the uh, curve. So in the upper portion of the linear demand curve, the elasticity is elastic. We get a bigger values. Uh, and we can see here that between A and B, uh, when we calculate between A and B, we get value five. And you can uh, uh, apply the same formula, like uh, 15 minus five divided by 10, right? So 10 divided by 10. And the change in the price is uh, 11 minus nine divided by, uh, 10 and so we get it you see two divided by 10 and get it five. So this is our price elasticity of demand in this portion, upper portion, but between A and B. So if we calculate the price elasticity in the middle portion, exactly in the middle portion between C and D, we get a one value. And if we calculate uh, between E and F uh, in the lower portion of the linear demand curve, we get the values 0.2. So we can see very easily that the value is greater than one, so it's elastic. If it is one, it's a unit elastic. And if it is less than one, it is inelastic. So we can uh, uh, safely, uh, or we can easily say that in a linear demand curve, uh, the demand uh, is unit elastic in the middle, exactly in the middle. And above the middle point, uh, elasticity is elastic because we get the value more than one. And below that, the, the elasticity is in inelastic. 
Uh, why? Because we are getting the value less than one. Uh, I already told you the shapes of the demand curve are also telling us that what is the uh, elasticity uh, or what uh, type of elasticity we can expect. Uh, so we have a three different uh, demand curves here. We can see the D1, which is vertical. Vertical demand curve reflects that the price elasticity is uh, perfectly, uh, uh, the elasticity is zero. Price elasticity of demand is zero. Whatever the price is, the demand is fixed. No change in the demand. So we see here the price elasticity of demand is zero uh, when it is a vertical line. For example, which products can be like a medicine, like an insulin for a diabetic patient, like a salt for all of us. So these are the products which we see that is the use, the consumption of these products are not dependent on the price. Then we see that this is a, a, a demand curve, a D2, which is horizontal. And in a horizontal, uh, the price is not changing. When the price is not changing, so the denominator is zero. So when, whenever in a mathematical way, when the denominator is zero, we get the infinite value. So this is an infinite value that uh, the elasticity is infinite. There is uh, the demand, the, the demand is unlimited or un infinite uh, if the price is this. And if the price is a little bit more than this, there is no demand. And below this, the, the demand is infinite. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the third one is a uh, curved one, and this is a uh, downward sloping demand curve. And we see that uh, in this particular case, uh, the elasticity is one. It's a unit elastic. So whatever the change is, uh, that change in quantity demanded is equal to the change in uh, uh, price, percentage change in price. And that's why we are getting always the value equal to one. So this is uh, uh, what uh, I want to discuss in this part. So in the second part, we're gonna talk about the price elasticity of supply. Uh, and uh, uh, the second part, we're gonna talk about the determinants of the elasticity. And in the third part, we're gonna talk about the price elasticity of supply. Uh, the determinants, uh, we're gonna talk uh, in detail uh, in the next 